one of our recent videos we mentioned or i mentioned i don't remember which one of us or i think it was me though that matt liked to drink pine needle tea and several people said would you please show us how to make that so it's a tea that matt makes uh, you don't drink it like every day or nothing but you do like <clears throat> to do it especially when he's out and about in the woods um, it's kind of nice to build a little fire and and then make some something hot you know if you're if you're hunting or scouting or whatever it is that you're doing but <clears throat> how did you first learn about it i saw it on on youtube uh, several several years, years ago yeah. i think it was a dave canterbury video okay and I got thinking we've got so much of that yeah. here, and I didn't realize that the uh, that it had all the vitamins and stuff in it that it does. So I thought, yeah, I ought to be doing that. Yeah. So Matt started doing it, like I said, mostly just while he's out and about. But then, if <clears throat> excuse me, I need some this morning. I'm not I'm not sick, but for some reason I've got a frog in my throat. But then after that, if Matt was feeling bad, or if one of us was maybe fighting a cold or something, Matt would make some. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've watched my videos, uh, our, our videos a lot, you know I hate hot tea, so I think they all, all hot teas are terrible. But Matt and the girls really love it, so they're really open to drinking it if they're feeling bad to kind of boost their immune system and get those vitamins. But, but if you like hot tea, it's good anytime, mm -hmm. right? Right. So now, since we live in the land of plenty when it comes to pine trees, we're going to show you how to harvest and then make the tea. So everyone's going to ask is, you know, is any pine tree, can you do this with any pine tree? And uh, what have you learned about it, Matt? No, not every pine tree. I mean, some of them are, are actually, I think they have a little toxicity in them, but these white pines here around our house, I've, I mean, I've done this a lot, so I know it's not going to hurt us, but it's each of these little clusters of needles you need to be sure it's a five cluster needle, or five needle cluster, excuse me. Uh, from what I've read, that's that's how you identify the ones that are good and against the ones that aren't. Uh, I don't know everything there is to know about it, but I do know that we've drank the tea out of these for a long time and never had any ill effects. I mean, some of the like spruce trees and that sort of thing, I don't know anything about, so you have to do your own research on it. Uh, but each one of these little clusters of needles have five needles in each cluster. And that's how I identify that it's okay to, to use it for the tea. And there's all kinds of videos and uh, blog posts and different kind of websites that talk about it online. So you could certainly, like Matt said, research more and find out about the trees in your area. The best thing about it, or the thing you hear touted most often, is that it's full of vitamin C. But I've also, I read a little bit last night, just because we knew we were going to do this video, that vitamin A is something that's it's really prevalent in the pine needle. And then also there's just all kinds of different uh, health benefits. So you can, you can do a quick search and find out uh, tons of information about it, why people say that it's one, it's a really healthy, healthy tea. And for us, it's neat that it's totally free because of right. where we live. And that little... That little bunch right there is more than we need to make a couple of cups of tea with. All right, first thing you'll do is get all the brown needles out and the little woody parts of the stem. You don't want the brown ones because they don't have anything in them anyway. Oh, that was another thing. Um, could you, I was thinking about, could you dry them and save them or they're better? This is something you need to do fresh. No, uh, you got to do it fresh because once they... Once you pull them and they turn brown, you know, they they lose the, the oils and stuff that's in the needles and the nutrients are gone anyway. And I guess some people might worry about washing them, but I, I don't think you ever wash them. No, I ain't never wash them. <laughs> There's some bird feathers. <laughs> <laughs> well. It ain't going to hurt you. I'm not going to use all of this. Just some of it. And then the next thing you want to do is cut them up a little bit. And what that does is 
kind of releases some of the oils and it makes it a little bit more manageable to put in the glass when you're going to steep it. Actually, a few little brown ones that's still in there. All right. Of course, you could do it inside over, you know, like you normally would steep tea. Right. In the teapot or yeah. just a pot on the stove. Yeah, we're actually going to do it on a French press. Okay. With a little MSR stove. Matt got this little stove for Christmas, so he's excited about it. This French press, I actually store coffee in it, so maybe it won't taste like coffee. <laughs> uh, well, that'd probably be all right, especially for you, as much as you love coffee. Set that over to the side. It's a nifty little stove if you're like Matt and you're out and about in the woods a lot, but it'd be handy for, you know, any kind of hiking or even camping. Yeah, uh, I mean, right. you know, you wouldn't want to use it, I don't guess, to make a, a full breakfast on or anything like that, but no, to, would... to warm up water or do minimal cooking. Be good for a power outage, too. Yeah, yeah, true. What's the name of the stove, just so people were uh, searching it's for a, it? Uh, that's a MSR brand. Just a little backpacking, ultralight backpacking stove. And the little canister is just uh, isobutane gas. Matt's mother got it for him for Christmas, so I'm not sure she, where she got it, but I would guess somewhere online. Yeah, I think I've seen them on Amazon, eBay, places like that. So now we're just going to light it and warm the water up. You don't want to boil it. Uh, boiling the water will kill the, the vitamin C. It's in the needles. You just want to get it good and warm. You just don't get it, just don't bring it to a boil. I guess just before a boil. Right. Which is, or I don't even get it that much. I yeah. just get it just warm. about warm enough to you just almost can't drink it, but don't go any further. Yeah. Okay. didn't take long, uh -uh. just a few minutes. Uh -uh. And you're gonna put the put the needles in. And put the needles in. And let them steep and then put a kind of cap it over so that it will trap that steam and it's not releasing the oils and the vitamins. And then about Six, eight minutes, it'll be ready. All right, it's been a few minutes, and now we're gonna use this press and press all the needles to the bottom. And then we're left with the liquid. As you can hear, it started raining on us. Maybe we can get it tasted before we have to run for the porch. You can put whatever you want to in your tea. Matt likes to put cinnamon and honey in it, so that's what he's gonna fix for us. 
I'm gonna do the honey first. And I'm gonna, I've tasted it before, but I'm gonna taste it again. It's just that I just don't, I don't know what it is about hot tea, I just don't like it. I say it tastes like a barn stall, and Matt says, how do you know what a barn stall tastes like? And I said, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it tastes like this. It tastes like any hot tea, whether it's chamomile, lemon, whatever. But Corey and Katie and Matt and Miss Cindy adore hot tea. They just love it. They drink it pretty much every day. Well, Matt don't drink it every day, but the girls and Miss Cindy do. There you go. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Is it good as you remembered? Yeah, it tastes like a barn stall. <laughs> good for you though, it's got vitamins in it. What do you think it tastes, I mean, I know you don't think it tastes like a barn stall, but like the pine, can you really taste that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I don't care what it tastes like, it's got, I mean, it's absolutely jammed with vitamins and that's what I'm interested in, getting the vitamin content out of it because it's good for you and it comes out of nature, so win-win. Yeah. That, that is the cool part, to just be able to go outside and harvest the needles. Right. Uh, and especially if you're feeling, you know, sick or about to have a cold or something like that, that's Matt always makes it and says it gives him a little pick-me-up and mm -hmm. helps him feel better. Right. And then if you're out and about in the backwoods, mm -hmm. you just need your water and your, mm -hmm. you know, you wouldn't even have to have your honey and cinnamon. That's kind of splurging there, right. which I guess you could take it with you. But, yeah, you could. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed seeing how to make pine needle tea. As always, we hope you'll continue to drop back by often and help us celebrate Appalachia.